welcome back to another Traders Podcast episode. My name is Jacob. This is Trade Happy, a platform for traders around the world to be happy and consistently profitable. And in today's podcast, we finally have a 5% as trader. I know that we have a lot of FTMO traders on here, um, but, you know, I thought it'd be good to get some other um, prop traders. So reached out to a few, um, got a reply, and we got him on the podcast. Now, I hope you guys find value in this. If you are looking at doing a prop firm uh, challenge, or um, it doesn't really need to be 5% five percenters, but this trader has experience with 5%ers, uh, very good experience with them. Um, he was very, very, um, he was speaking highly of 5%ers and the way that they do things. So if you're thinking about doing a 5%ers challenge, make sure to watch all of this video because uh, he goes into why they're good. He also goes into um, how you can pass it. Um, some tips on how to pass it, and then also just, you know, his general journey as a trader. So I hope you find value in this. If you do, uh, become a member. It's literally 99p. Not going to sell you on it, but if you do find value, hit the join button and become a member. Get all the, get all the perks. If you don't want to do that, hit the subscribe button. Please welcome Timothy. Um, so for anyone that doesn't know who you are, can you just tell us a bit about yourself? Yeah, so my name is Timothy. Um, so I'm here in the US. Um, so I started trading um, by getting into stocks. Um, that was kind of my first thing I ever did. Um, and I was introduced to that about three years ago. Um, so I enjoyed trading stocks and I learned a lot, um, but I definitely found that I wasn't really gonna make good money trading stocks um, with the amount of funding that I had at the time. Um, and so I started looking, okay, so how can I, you know, start trading with some extra margin? Um, so I actually moved over to the futures market. Um, and at the time I was actually living close to Chicago. So it was kind of a cool thing for me because I could actually go to the CME and see where everything was, you know, being traded. Mm. Um, so that was an exciting time for me and I learned a lot trading futures. Um, but again, futures is, it's somewhat limited, um, as you start to, progress as a trader, you start to learn about, you know, your risk to reward ratios um, and how important those are to actually keeping your portfolio grow growing. Um, and so I moved into Forex um, because I had learned about how you can adjust your lot sizes to meet those risk reward ratios. And ever since then, I mean, it's just been amazing because I can actually watch how, you know, if I take a 1% loss, just like every trader is ever going to take, you know, um, if I'm, as long as I'm making that three to 4% gain, I'm always growing every time um, versus, mm. you know, with futures or um, with stocks, it's a little bit harder to actually make the growth. You can do it with stocks. Um, but yeah, just having that risk to reward in Forex was, that was a huge plus for me and it's helped me grow ever since. Yeah. And what were your like initial thoughts about trading when you started? So I think, so I guess like everybody else, you look at it um, and you're like, wow, that looks really easy. I guess, you know, I'll just jump in and I'll just make a few grand and that's not how it works. <laughs> like some guys get lucky right off the bat. Um, but, you know, it's taken me two to three years to just figure out, you know, the simple things or what seems simple looking back, I guess. Um, and, you know, you don't have to be profitable every time. And that's something that probably was my biggest lesson so far is as long as i'm within my risk tolerance you don't have to be profitable every time to make money so mm. so can you like briefly describe your strategy that you're currently using yeah so for me um i use supply and demand um i started out trading uh, macd and rsi and all that stuff um and i i back tested it and I thought that, you know, I could make, you know, the crossovers work or, you know, an oversold or overbought position, you know, I just have to trade the opposite. Um, and that really ended up burning me in the long run. Um, so I'd say probably in the last year and a half, I switched to supply and demand trading. And basically, supply and demand trading is as easy as looking at a time frame, seeing where your um, extremes on the chart are. So, you know, you look at your 
if you're looking left, you should always look left at price um, to see where previous support and resistance levels are. But supply and demand, it actually looks at the range of, okay, where is the top of the price? Where was it most expensive? And where was it the cheapest in recent history, right? Um, so from there, you look at points in the price where price maybe dramatically ran away to the short or the long side. Um, when you look and you find those areas, you can actually set up zones where most support and resistance traders would put lines. Um, you can end up with zones um, and where those zones are is actually where orders were left. So it, let's say that the market gets flooded with cash and buyers love the price um, that the market is at at one point. Okay. And we're going towards the long side. I'm going to be looking for a retracement down to that previous demand zone um, because when price moved that fast, it was that explosive. There are always more buy orders left on the table. So something that I always harp on with, um, you know, any anyone that I work with trading is always when price comes back to that level, um, you want to grab that level on the first touch. So when it retraces in a long, I'm going to get right onto that demand zone. I'll have a limit order or buy order right there. Um, I'll have my stop right under that zone. I'll set my risk to reward and I will take that first touch. <laughs> and you'll just mm. basically pick up that demand. Um, and the same works towards the short side as well. So that's that's probably my uh, strategy in a nutshell. So, okay, I have, I have two questions about that. The first one would be, um, does this work on every time frame? And the second one would be, um, what would you say to someone that, that says that you need to wait for confirmation? Okay, no, those are great questions. So. Um, supply and demand works on every single time frame. Um, now, the clarity is what you'll struggle with on every single time frame, right? So if I am on a weekly chart, I can tell you where weekly levels of supply and demand are, and those are really clear. Um, and you can trade those, but you're going to be holding those for a very long time, right? So if I drill down to, let's say, a daily chart, um, and I do the same thing, again, I may be looking at the swing highs and lows on the daily chart and trade those, you know, supply and demand levels. Um, and again, I'd probably be holding that for a long period of time. If I break down to a four hour or one hour, I'm going to get a little bit more responsive or quick action in the price, um, which is generally what I tend to trade. I tend to trade the four hour to the daily. Um, mm -hmm. And you get really clear levels of supply and demand um, down to, you know, past the hourly into, I'd probably say 30 minute chart. Um, the 30 minute chart is about where I stop because honestly, the price fluctuations and, you know, the one minute, the five minute, the 15 minute charts, um, I, I don't think it's wise to trade those, you know, supply and demand. I think that that's more of a, impulsive type day trading mentality um and so in regards to your second question um i'm sorry can you so it was um yeah does it work on like every time frame and then also what would you say to someone that says that you need to wait for confirmation um so confirmation is key right so um if i am looking at a demand zone okay um, and again, just to kind of lead it back to most people who trade support resistance, um, you would be looking for your line of support resistance to be broken. Let's say we're going long. You're looking for that to break long and to retrace, come back to that line that you had drawn that previous support resistance that was broken. And then you're looking to enter there, um, as your confirmation that's going back up, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so in that same way, um, using the supply and demand theory, um, I'm actually, I'm not looking to, to get into the market every time the support and resistance level gets broken. I'm looking to get into the market where there was a <laughs> supply and demand level or, you know, to relate it to most people, again, support resistance level um, that was broken where price dramatically ran away because that tells me that that was where the market said, that this was a great bargain. Um, and like I said, that's where your leftover orders are to be filled. So you can have a little bit more confirmation um, with supply and demand in that way. Um, because you know, if 
price dramatically moved from that point, you know that there's going to be more orders there. Um, you know that people are going to get back in. The market has a memory. Um, versus if I was just to get in every single you know um, support resistance line um, that I thought might hold up, um, if price didn't dramatically move from those points, then there's no big buy orders or you know by the big boys playing in the game. There's no big orders at those um, support and resistance levels the way that there would be at the big supply and demand levels. So in that way, I feel like supply and demand um, trading that theory, um, you have a lot more validity to what you're doing when you enter. And you can you can rest assured a little bit more, I think, than if you just jumped in at any support resistance line retracement. Yeah. And how, how long has it taken you to develop that strategy and that mindset around that strategy as well to then be consistently profitable you know i'd say it's taken me probably a better better part of a year um i got introduced to it uh, by the fibers um they're a um, prop firm um that's located in europe actually um i think it's europe and israel they're, they're in both of those areas of the world mm. um and they actually introduced me to the idea of supply and demand because I understood support and resistance really well. Um, but I noticed that, you know, if, again, if I come back to a long, um, if I wait for a retracement to a support resistance level, if there's no conviction at that support resistance level, um, then you don't have, you won't have the buy conviction to back up your buy order, if that makes sense. Um, and so as I started to learn that from them, um, you know, the, everything just started to click and it started to make sense. Um, and it's amazing because when you start charting your, you know, supply and demand levels, like almost always your risk tolerance of at least, you know, one, two, three and up, it, it's almost always calculated in the market. So it's, it's been a beautiful thing. It's, it's really clarified a lot for me. No, so that's, that's good, actually. That's pretty good. Um... So would you say it was a difficult process to actually become a profitable trader for you, or was it relatively kind of straightforward and simple? Um, I would say it was anything but simple. <laughs> <laughs> um, trading is probably one of, because you're alone most of the time, um, and often there's not, you know, a, a good support group for trading, um, you are left to figure it out by yourself. Um, mm. And so finding you know, guys like the Fivers or, um, you know, being able to listen to, you know, stuff like this on podcasts, um, you know, I would just always say if you're, you know, a new trader, like cling on to that kind of stuff, um, you know, soak it in, listen to it a few times, go over the videos, um, because trading is a hard game. Um, you're not going to jump in and just be consistently profitable overnight. Um, you know, I'm just about three years into this process um, and I'm doing a lot better than I was when I was starting, but I mean, you're always going to end up taking losses. And I think the thing that separates traders, good traders from bad traders is, um, and consistent traders from non-consistent traders is just the simple fact of, you know, when you take that 1% loss or whatever your risk tolerance is, um, you walk away from the charts, you take a breath um, and you come back to it and you don't stop. Um, I think the same thing can be said for, you know, the rest of life that, you know, if you let yourself get down and you don't get back into it, um, then you're never going to succeed. It's, it's in the struggle that you succeed. So mm -hmm. I would just say to new traders, you know, don't, don't get down on yourself. If you have some bad days or some bad weeks, um, just figure out what you're doing wrong and come back to it and go again. That's pretty good. Um, and obviously you were talking about the five percenters. Um, what, what made you go with them? So the thing that's really unique about the five percenters is as I'm looking at, um, you know, firms that are web-based, um, none of them allow you the flexibility that the five percenters do. Um, so for example, I do a lot of swing trading to daily swing points um, and the fibers are the only ones that actually allow you to hold those positions um, overnight or over the weekend if you have to. Um, most are geared towards doing day trading um, type setups. 
and that's fine. But there's also, you know, a vast majority of traders um, that maybe they're working full-time jobs or part-time jobs and they're trying to get into the markets. Um, and really, I would say starting out, you know, swing trading is always the way to go because in order for you to be profitable day trading, um, you have to understand the supply and demand levels that are happening faster than you would if you were swing trading. So being on a slower mm -hmm. time, a slower, bigger, broader time frame um, helps out a lot. So um, that being said, the fibers are, they're just a great platform for that. Um, they don't have you go through and do all of this, you know, stage one, stage two testing, to see, or, you know, testing of the applicant to see, you know, where you're going to end up um, as far as a good trader or not a good trader. Um, their evaluation period is actually, I, I want to say it was 180 days. Um, that was the max allowable time you had to trade with them. And the on their lowest, smallest account, uh, you only had to make $360. So it's not like it was, you know, a very hard evaluation period either, as long as you're understanding your risk to reward ratio and being consistent. I mean, I think anyone can pass that with mm -hmm. some experience. Um, and then the Fivers is unique in that they guarantee funding um, up to 1.28 million when you get to that point. Um, and there's not, I mean, you look at guys, um, you know, the popular ones out there, I'm not going to name them. Um, you look at some of the popular ones out there, you're only guaranteed up to $100,000 um, at the highest level from what I've seen. Um, so the rate of growth, um, the Fivers, they really invest into their um, people as far as training. They've always been there whenever I needed some help. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's I, I just think it's a great program. It's kind of a unique one of a kind program, so. Hmm. And would you say that anyone that's looking to do 5% needs to trade a certain way or do they kind of, can they be swing traders and day traders or either? I, I think that the fibers, they're a very um, open firm. They, they will allow you to come in with any, any setup really that you have any um, theory that you view the markets through. Um, they're very supportive of it. Um, their core is supply and demand trading, um, but that's just what they trade. Mm -hmm. um, they don't expect other traders to come in with that. If you're profitable and you're doing, you know, um, EMA crossovers, or you're doing MACD crossovers or something like that, and things are working for you, um, they completely 100% support that. Um, what they're more interested in as a firm, um, and again, what makes them unique, is that they're not so concerned with how you make the money, they just want consistent traders. So that allows and opens up the doors for so much more flexibility. Um, and it allows a lot more people who wouldn't be able to trade for other firms to be able to trade for a firm. Mm, yeah, I think that's good. So would you say that becoming a funded trader has improved your trading? Absolutely, um, 100%. So I think that having accountability to someone, um, having your risk and your max drawdown, um, having all that defined, and having somebody who's checking in with you, um, to me, that's gold. That's that's worth more than you know the money that they're letting me trade with. <laughs> mm. To have that consistency, um, because if, I mean, let's be honest. If it's just you and the charts, you're tempted to make a lot more trades than if it's you, the charts, and someone watching you. Um, yes. And I think that that is. I think that any new trader should. Do, should work their hardest to get into some sort of situation like that, whether it be with a mentor or a firm or someone who, you know, you know, that's been trading for a little while. Um, I think accountability is key in bringing you up as a trader. So, mm. um, And if anyone is kind of looking at maybe not just 5%, but any kind of prop firm out there, what advice would you give them? Um, my advice um, would be again, like, take it slow. Um, definitely just jump into it. If you are at all profitable, um, you've figured out your risk to reward ratio, um, and you have a system that's starting to work for you, I would say, you know, jump in with both feet. Um, the worst that you're going to do is fail an evaluation, um, but you can always come back to another evaluation. Um, yeah. 
the key is just like I said earlier in the um, podcast is just you know figure out what you did wrong take a breath and then come back and figure it out um, and eventually you will get it hmm. yeah I think that's good um, there's a lot of traders obviously that do want to do the kind of funded trader programs but I feel like they're kind of not scared but they're too kind of cautious around the outcome that could happen um, possibly um, so because you've been trading for um, like a funded trader program how would you say traders can have longevity with their mentality and also physically with trading because it can be very very stressful so that's actually a really good question um everybody's psychology is a little bit different right um Mm. for me you know i feel like i'm a little stubborn (laughs) so (laughs) for me i feel like you know when it whenever i have a mistake i look at things really analytically and i can look at it and say okay i think i think i did this wrong i can see that price really did this um and i was wrong in my judgment so i'm going to make a note of that and come back to it for me, that's my longevity plan um, because I understand my psychology. Um, I've learned myself as a trader um, and I know when to take a break and to step back. Um, and I think that's probably one of the biggest things that frustrates new traders as far as their longevity and you know they're successful um, is, you know, do you take that time to just step away from the charts? Um, because no one goes to work constantly, right? So if you are constantly staring at your charts, um, you're never allowing yourself a break to like breathe and think. Um, And you need to have a hobby outside of trading. I know a lot of guys who try and make trading a hobby um, and trading is a passion of mine, but it's not my hobby. It's something that I do for for extra income, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I always try and find ways to take a break and take a breath. Um, and then, you know, that will over time with your strategy and understanding risk to reward. Um, if you're implementing those things consistently, you're taking that time, um, your longevity is going to be good. You know, that's kind of my take on it. Yeah. Um, and what would you say? So I've seen, um, People on kind of um, YouTube and everything talk about psychology and um, mindset. Would you say a trader needs uh, routines and uh, maybe fitness and nutrition, all that kind of stuff, implemented into their trading plan? Or would you say that um, it's not something that a trader would need? Um, So I'm more apt to say that they need it more than they don't. You know, for me, I try to go to the gym at least three times a week. And that's, it's not necessarily for improving my trading. I go and do that just because that improves me as a person, right? Um, That allows me to have an outlet to honestly, to relax, to focus on something simple, you know? Um, I think that that's very important for a trader to have a structured lifestyle outside of trading, yes. Mm, yeah and do you have any any advice for traders that are maybe looking to develop that um so i would just say you know if if you find yourself sitting in front of the charts all week long (laughs) um, you're never walking away from your computer then i would just say hey man that's that's an unhealthy lifestyle right you're gonna burn your eyeballs out staring at your screens constantly you know it's (laughs) you gotta go you gotta walk away and you gotta go do something um you know figure out a time whether you're, and let's say that you want to try and day trade, okay? Figure out the times that the pairs that you want to trade are going to be most volatile and trade that time. And if you're not profitable, don't sit there in front of the computer, um, you know, walk out and go for a run or, you know, go do whatever, go do whatever suits you, whatever um, allows you to relax um, and then come back, at, you know, the next day, just swinging and ready to go. Hmm. What would you say is the worst piece of advice you've been given? Hmm. I would say, honestly, if I'm going to answer that truthfully, it's probably the worst pieces of advice that I've been given. Um, And that would be through 
a lot of my research, you know, just searching around um, to different YouTube traders who I honestly call scammers when I look at it. Um, mm -hmm. There is so much misinformation with trading out there. Um, it's unbelievable. It, everybody trying to sell you, you know, their program and uh, trying to get you to buy into, you know, their signals and all this. Um, best thing you can do as a trader is find solid people um, as yourself or the Fivers um, who are profitable, who are um, analyzing the markets correctly um, and start learning from them. Um, because, you know, my first, I want to say my first year when I got into stocks, um, there was just so much misinformation. I got so misguided. Um, something as simple as support and resistance was foggy and it shouldn't be that way. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, always dive into a book, you know, listen um, to experienced people. Um, and it, it can be hard to determine who is, you know, really teaching you something valid and who's not when you're a newbie when you're first starting out, it's, um, there's a lot of gray area. So I think part of it too, is just weeding it out. Um, but I would definitely say, you know, um, as far as my worst information, that's probably where it's came from. Yeah. Um, and flipping that, what would be the best advice you've ever got? Um, probably just consistency, um, and picking yourself up. And, um, I think those two things are, they're very, very important. Um, cause when I was trading futures, um, my, about my second year in, um, futures, there is, there's a lot of margin. Um, you know, a few ticks can bring in a lot of cash flow or give you a very big loss. Um, and so I had to learn and I was kind of forced to learn to be consistent with what I was doing. You can't afford to not stick to your trading plan. Um, that's definitely a huge one. Hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, especially when, you know, there's so many strategies out there, it's very, very easy to kind of go from strategy to strategy. Um, what advice would you give someone who struggles with the discipline to stay with one strategy? Well, I would never, knowing what I know now, I would never go and blindly tell a trader to just stick with whatever strategy he's using. Um, I would say, let's figure out, um, and you can do it yourself as a trader. If, if you are consistent, let's say, and you do, you know, a month of one strategy and you're nailing your strategy every time, um, but your risk to reward, um, you're incorporating that, but it's showing you that, hey, the strategy isn't working. Um, if you're consistent with that over a period of time, it's like any other study in life. Like if it, if you implement something and you let it run for a little bit, you should always step back and look at that strategy and say, is this profitable for me? And have I been consistent with the strategy I've implemented? Um, and if it's not bringing you back returns, then at that point, I would say, okay, let's figure something else out um, because maybe we're not looking at it you know, quite correctly. Um, mm. And, you know, as we, I guess for lack of better words, evolve as traders, um, we're always going to be figuring something else out about the market. Um, but that being said, I do believe that if you're not consistent and you're just fluctuating between different strategies every other week, um, you're never going to see good returns. Um, and it's honestly going to throw your psychology off. So I hope that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that did make sense. Um, so what would you say is a misconception that people have about successful traders um again you know i think in the age of media i think it just comes to so many people see you know the flashy cars and the flashy houses and all that yeah. um, but no one ever shows you the it, and it is a struggle no one ever shows you the struggle to get to the point of profitability um and it, it takes a lot of willpower to get there. It really does. I won't sugarcoat it. Um, I think that you just kind of have to like turn those misconceptions off when you see them um, and understand that you're working towards those things um, and they may, and they're, they're good things. Um, but just understand that it's a process like anything else in life. It's not a get rich quick scheme. Mm. Yeah. So 
what what would you say um motivates you to constantly get better at trading um so i think that's evolved for me um when i first you know got in um to trading i i just wanted to quit my job like everyone else and mm. i uh, i wanted to you know make the millions um <laughs> and <laughs> and then i see you know after i had gotten married um and i started to make a little bit of extra money i saw how it helped my family um and so for me it kind of switched a little bit um where it wasn't so much about chasing you know vast amounts of wealth it was more about like wow i can actually use this now to sustain my family um i have more time with my family um and i think that's what it what, it, what it's all about honestly is you can have all the money in the world you never even get the time back um so if mm. trading allows me to have that extra time um then it's 100% worth it um so i guess i've kind of evolved in that way yeah that that's really good actually i think that there's probably a lot of traders that start out with that kind of mentality of get rich quick and then it evolves um later down the road um so i kind of have one final question what is one piece of non-conventional advice that you would give to a trader that wants to succeed like i've said a few times my my biggest piece of advice is just it's just to take a step back and to never give up with whatever you're doing you know um really look at the strategy you're trading like we had just discussed um stick with it um if it's not working for you over a period of time and you have absolutely stuck with it you know reanalyze it take a break come back to the charts reanalyze it um and just never stop moving forward you should always be learning as a trader i mean if you ever stop learning um and you think that you've just figured out the perfect strategy um your longevity is going to suffer um mm. so always come back to it with a fresh and open mind um always take your breaks um and and never give up with it if it's something that you truly believe in um just like anything else in life you you have to run for it and you have to put in the work for it um i was in the military and i think maybe that kind of helped to shape my mindset where you know there were times um where <clears throat> they push you really hard um and you feel like you're going to break um and that happens with trader psychology um but you push through it anyways um because you know it's at the end of it um and the same thing goes with trading um when you push through and you push through correctly um it it's amazing what can happen yeah yeah um is there anything else that you would like to say and also uh where can people find you if they want to contact you um so honestly um facebook has been working well for me um so they can always find me through you um mm -hmm. i don't have any other youtube channel or anything like that um i haven't really delved into anything with that so um yeah any any questions though i mean as far as the supply demand theory goes or questions about the fibers um i'm i'm definitely open to answering so okay amazing um if anyone has any questions i guess they can put it in the comments and i can like reach out to you or, or whatever um